Hey everybody, Pete A. Turner from The Break It Down Show. Our guest today is John Preston. Normally he's a firefighter in Palo Alto, but he's also written a few hit songs that are smash hits in their own right. You've likely heard these on the radio. In this episode, though, things are a little different. John lost his father about four years ago, and then the sudden loss of their father, a strong patriarch, was a big shock to the family. John and his older brother, Mike, in particular, struggled to get through the grief. Well, that loss, when coupled with PTSD, proved to be a fatal combination for Mike. He's a veteran and a 20-year uh, police officer, so a first responder. And about three and a half years ago, he took his own life. When Mike committed suicide, it tore his family apart. His decision was sudden, and to those around him, it just made no sense. I mean, his funeral was packed full of people. He was beloved in his, his community. There were hundreds of people that counted him as a friend, but it, it just wasn't enough. Mike had lost the ability to reach out to save himself, and his world collapsed in until he finally took his own life. Now, this hits home for me in my world for a few reasons. Obviously, my own struggles with suicidal ideation daily. I mean, it's crazy. I'm not in any danger today, but I, I understand this topic. But also tomorrow, we lay Terry Martin or Terry Marcacci, depending on how you know him, to rest. He's from my hometown. He's graduated with me in my class. And uh, similarly, it was a shock. And he is beloved by so many people. He has a lovely daughter that was clearly you know, the, the light in his life. And uh, ultimately, it, it wasn't enough. And Terry took his life. Actually, he was alive when this show was recorded at, uh, just a little over two weeks ago and dead before I got home from that trip. And it was a short trip. Anyhow, um, my hometown has hundreds of people hurting now, you know, because Terry lost his way. John's family has a lot of people hurting because Mike lost his way. And, and John will say it. He was, he was on the same path, you know, a self-destructive path. And I guess what I want to say to all of you in this moment is we all carry some kind of weight. And before things get too dark, spend time with your people, whether you're on at, I don't know, call them on the phone or go out to lunch or make lunch for them and invite them over. Spend time for each, spend time together. Uh, you know, just the more we can be in proximity and contact is how you help someone before it gets too dark, before we lose our ability to reach out and isolate and fill our minds with the thoughts that push us off the edge. Reach out to your friends, reach out to your family, get them out of that moment. Mike and Terry's deaths are shocks to the community. They had so much to give and do and so many people who loved them. This is a hard fight and John is doing something incredible to battle suicide. John is deeply emotional about it. You'll hear that clearly throughout the episode as we both struggle through various moments. In January 2020, four years after his brother's death, John is going to start road marching from Palo Alto, 22 miles a day, 22 kilos on his back, all the way down to San Diego, and he won't be alone. People like Secretary John Mattis, uh, show favorites Rudy Reyes, who's a riot, Scott Husing, John Krotek, actor Michael Broderick, also actor Vinny Vargas, and even myself, we're going to join him along the way and uh, take on parts of this. They're going to do it's going to be so much media around this thing. It's really a big deal. If you want to support John, and I really encourage you to do this, especially if you're hurting from Terry's death or someone else in your life from suicide, go to 22andyou.net and then chip in whatever you can or share that message or just do something to be involved because suicide is, is an isolated thing. Don't let people isolate themselves. Get out there and uh, get after it. Help 22andyou.net. John and his people are going to uh, help us all have the ability to fight this a little more. By the way, we're joined by Adam King, a fellow Palo Alto firefighter, and uh, John's right-hand man who's helping handle the logistics, and it is an enormous challenge. You're going to hear a lot of great things in this episode. Uh, I, I really I thank everybody for what you do, and, and if you can, really help 22andyou.net. In the meantime, let's go get our guest in, John Preston. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mitchell. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. <laughs> What's up? This is John Preston, and you are listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. 
you don't know who John Preston is, you should know already. That's right. what I just heard. Right. <laughs> That's a true story, bro. First off, hat tip to John Krotak, who uh, connected us because I produced this show and you were on. And I was like, I got to get on board with what you're doing. We're all going to find out about that in a second. But also bringing the whole network in. Rudy Reyes, Scott Hughesing, just the whole crew is coming around what you're doing because it's powerful. We've not figured it out. So we need more things like, like what you're doing. Why don't you break the suspense and tell us what you're doing? First of all, yeah, it, it, the the whole crew, you, you say it and you got people like Scott, you got people like Rudy, uh, we've had Rocco, uh, Jamie Kaler that's on uh, Tacoma FD. You know, it, these are veterans that I've met and learned over my music career. Michael right? Broderick, too, right? Michael Broderick, yeah, yeah. that's another one. And these guys are in big-time TV. You know, it, stuff we turn on at night, they're there, you know, yeah. and, and they're all hearing what we're doing, and they're like, oh, my God, I want to be a part of that. Yeah, so about four months ago, I guess, somewhere around there, Adam King is in the house, by the way. Uh, Adam King's in the house? Hey, hey everybody, this is Adam. Firefighter, oh, paramedic, yeah. life coach, and everything extraordinary running the logistics of what we're about to talk about. Yeah. Um, so about four months ago, I, I came up with this idea, and I was like, whatever this is, I, I felt it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and a little history on me, and I'll make this as short as possible because we'll probably get into it a lot more later. I, I am a family member th that has survived suicide in my family. My older brother was a Marine veteran, a police officer for 20 years. Uh, he lost his battle with post-traumatic stress, and he's not here anymore. I've done a lot of things already. I've yeah. done a ton of things that say, I want to stop this. I want to be public about this. I speak about it. I'm wide open, right? I've had top 200 songs that are about this. I've had top 20 rock songs running in the charts with Metallica and, and the Foo Fighters, you know. And, and let's, uh, let's slow down right here and say, like, what you're saying, these are hits. These you are hits. Hits song like that are way at the top of the chart and above other bands like the bands you're talking about. Yeah. Like, this is not like, Oh, I wrote for Sean. She's like, that's great, but this is bigger than that. Yeah, and, and Coach King tells me that I need to sit in that sometimes and 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 bask in it and realize how cool that really is. Yeah, because well, sometimes, right. sometimes when you're in it, you you don't necessarily understand what kind of gravity you're creating. And and I'm noticing it now with announcing what we were doing. It, I'm seeing people saying. Dude, you touched so many lives, and you, I, we can't wait. You don't know how many people are behind you. Four months ago, I come up with an idea, and I'm emotionally like distraught about it. I actually called my girlfriend, and I'm on my way home from work this moment that it triggered. Mm -hmm. And I called her, and I said, if I decided that I was going to take however long it takes to do a 22-mile-a-day ruck, maybe, with yeah. you know 22 kilos on my back, so what, 48 and a half pounds, and I went from Palo Alto to San Diego would you support that? You know, that was, that was like the first question that came mm -hmm. out of any of this. Yeah. Because I, I think in the past I've always worried, am I being supported? You know, like, a, a, is everybody going to get behind what I'm doing? And that's been my own personal struggle, right? Like, because I know people are behind me, but I always feel like I'm alone in it. You know, by the way, first time I've never felt alone. I, I do not feel alone right now. I feel super supported. Good. So she says, yeah, I got, I got your back. And I, I broke down, man. I, oh, wow. I was weeping, I, out loud weeping. And my first thought was my brother, you know? And I didn't know from there, like, what do I do? Yeah. I, I want to do this now. What do I do? I, that was the same day I called her in between station two or whatever and station three. And then we were both getting off duty from an overtime. And I talked to you then. And he was super stoked about it. Oh, we could do that, you know? Okay, well, let's not go too fast. So how long has your brother been gone? Three and a half years right now. It'll be four years on a day. And was it step. like a prolonged fight? We're like, you're no. like, okay, so this was a sudden kind of. No, I knew he had post-traumatic stress. He knew I had post-traumatic stress. Right. We knew we had issues. Yeah. The family knew we had issues. We lost our father six months before Mike's suicide. Right. And we all kind of did what brothers did and, and had some trouble with that. Right. Yeah. Like there was a hierarchy in the family that wasn't necessarily established anymore. So even though he was the oldest, there were some disconnects. And, and rather than be best friends like we were our entire life, we were kind of in a weird spot. Hey, this is P. Day Turner from the Break It Down Show checking in real quick to ask you this. John, Scott, and I all support Save the Brave with our time, our location, our effort, and our money. Each month, we give a small amount. Do the same with us. Go to savethebrave.org. 
click on the donate tab, pick an amount that you want to come out each month, and they will handle all the rest. I stand behind these folks. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the show. Rather than be best friends like we were our entire life, we were kind of in a weird spot. Yeah. And you may not know this, but people suck at people dying. Yeah, we were they terrible. They don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm living in it right now. Yeah. It, it, it post his death, it's a lot worse than it was post dad's death. Right, right. Because you have to yeah. deal with that. And then you're like, well, now we're going to, what, what do we do? And no one knows like how to manage their own shit. Mm-hmm. And so then they get into other people's shit because that's the best thing. Well, got. especially when the one that dies is everyone's hero, right? right. And that's what happened with dad. Yeah. Was this guy was a puppeteer running the whole family. And, and now we're all looking at each other like, yeah. Who takes over? You uh-huh. know, and, and my oldest brother claimed himself to be the patriarch of the family right and because of that when i knew he was going through stress and i knew he was going through problems and even at some points projecting his own problems onto me i thought to myself every time this is mike he's got this he's good yeah that's my older brother man he he taught me how to be cool yeah yeah like be cool hey and i ain't even that good at it i wasn't nearly as good as he was you know you really have to fix that part of yeah you know We're working on it. We're all a work in progress. <laughs> I mean, a mustache would help. Maybe. Maybe that's I had one this morning <laughs> to <laughs> shave it off. This is the whole reason why the idea was so great right from the beginning mm. is suicide is this thing that just sneaks up on people. Yeah. They feel alone. They feel miserable. And then they kill themselves. Yeah. And it happens to the veterans. It happens to the fire service. It happens to the police. It happens to doctors it happens sure. to everybody sure yeah and when john came to me with this idea i was like this is what i want to do yeah i was like i'm in and i want to go back to the thing you're talking about like feeling alone and with your girlfriend as i was walking over here i was talking to my girlfriend mm-hmm. and she and i always felt like oh i'm going to talk to this person and, and she's not in the veteran community that's not her family yeah. you know she's totally different than me in that and she's like why are you doing this and i'm like well because it's veteran suicide and i have to i, I have to like I'm not working so hard that I can't stand it. Yeah. And I, if I can help someone stay alive, then I need to do that. Yeah. And in my head, and this is where we get all fucked up. I'm like, she's not going to dig this. She's not going to like it. And she's like, that's great. Mm-hmm. You know? And it makes me emotional now. Yeah. You know, because she was there the whole time. But in my head, and it's part of my PTSD is I don't weigh things right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like this is a challenge. This is going to be, and it's not, the work is not a challenge. Like, the emotional part well and why does it have to be the same right i grew up in a house where my father worked multiple jobs to make sure that that we stayed afloat yeah and a lot of times he gave everything and never got anything in return why does it have to be that way yeah yeah why can't i do all of that and still flourish and be successful and and whatever right And, and why do i think that just because every other time i wasn't supported that this time can't be different. Yeah. And who and knows if you were right that you weren't yeah. supported. It, it could have right? been that you I could were... have been supported the whole damn time. I, I have yeah. no idea. But I got a divorce that's lined up because of the way I felt on that one, right? Yeah. Like yeah. You, you never know. And, and and that that was just that was that circle. We're we're moved past that. Yeah. And we're in this world. And and in this world I feel more confident than I ever had. Right. And, and it's because of people like Adam. It's it, it's because of the support I have at home. Mm-hmm. Like I know right now that I know nothing about logistics. I know nothing about fucking like putting together maps and getting permits or any of that, but that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's basically a lot of it has already happened Yeah, because there's people in place. There's a team now versus Mm -hmm. what it was before and what all of them keep telling me, Adam, or and we haven't even got to the rest of the team that we're working with, people like Silver Rose Entertainment with... Julia Ling and, right. and, and Micah Higley that are making films and they're going to make our film. They all keep telling me the same thing. John, just go hike. Yeah. John, just go hike, which gives me this crazy confidence that everything else is going to work out because people just keep saying that to me. Well, you have this idea. It's sort of like your song. You can write a song. A lot of people write songs. Yeah. I'll go sing in the song in the shower tonight that I'll make up on the but no one's going to listen. Like once you get that elevation where you get out of your own immediate circle, you didn't know me three weeks ago, no. you know, but now all of a sudden here we are sitting here in Palo Alto hanging out because there's something in, in this idea that's working and you're just a magnet drawn to people. So you would just be the magnet and let us all 
pile on and, and, yeah. and push, you know? Yeah, and I call it magic, and Adam didn't believe me for years. Like, we'd sit in the, the medic van and, and talk about, like, how you could just think things into magic, and then now being part of a project with me now, he, mm -hmm. he's kind of got a chance to see magic actually work, you know? And Should I lay in, like, you can do magic? <laughs> yeah, totally. Underneath. Oh, oh American. it's uh. magic. Oh, that one too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the magic thing is pretty interesting, actually. I don't know that I still believe in magic like John does, but we have had some pretty incredible experiences. So John was talking about permits and yeah. logistics, and I had the privilege of designing the route. And on the face of it, it's not that complicated. He's got to walk 22 miles a day, and he's got to go right. from Palo Alto to San Diego. I need you to go yeah. out to El Camino Real, and right face, and walk. don't just stop. Go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just go. And so... Planning that out was really interesting, actually, because as we were planning it out, looking at Google Maps, mm -hmm. I see like little stores pop up, and I'm like, huh, that's a potential sponsor. Or, hey, what's this guy's story? And I look into them, and they've done veteran support stuff yeah. in the past. Yeah. So we have a whole list of people we haven't even had the chance to contact yet that we're hopeful will support us in some way, and I'm pretty yeah. confident they will. We've reached out to multiple government agencies that are issuing permits for filming and this, that, and the other thing and got nothing but positive responses. Right. Everybody can get behind this idea because we all, whether we're veterans or not, have been affected by suicide. Yeah. And so it's been awesome, actually. It's been a pleasure just to reach out to people and say, hey, you know, John's going to be hiking, and we're doing this so that we can save some lives and we can take care of our community, we can take care of our people. Yeah. And uh, everybody's just gotten on board and so whether that's magic or not i don't know but it's sure working yeah yeah it is working it is magic magic takes hard work you got to build a box you got to put a lady in it you got to make it disappear. You, you got to bring it back you know yeah. so there's there's a lot in that 22 miles each day 22 miles except for day the last day the last, last day to do a full marathon 27 miles <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, i tried day. so i was explaining to someone today i think it was matt like being Matt, like you got people here that they've known me my mm -hmm. like the last nine years, so they're they're just shit givers, right? So Matt was being Matt, and I was like, yeah, like the last day is like five miles longer than the rest of everything else. And he's like, whatever, that's like five miles, bro. And I'm like, Nick was there, and Nick runs marathons and stuff like that. And Nick looked at me, and was like, oh my god, five miles, <laughs> like yeah. yeah, that's gonna be rough because right yeah. now I I training. When you get about to 16, mm -hmm. it hurts. Yeah. Everything hurts. And those yes. last, like, miles to get to 22, yeah. it, you feel like you're going to break into pieces. And, and right now, I'm trying to hit my stride, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be in full stride. By the, by the day we step, I want to make 22 miles my bitch. And right. just over and over and over be able to do that. And I know there's going to be complications. And I know there's going to be fights. But ultimately... I will be in the most peak shape that I can be in for that. Yeah. And what's cool is like, I still kind of look squishy and like, <laughs> yeah. it's because I stopped weight training and I stopped doing all that. And I'm literally like, I'm in a fight and I plan to win the fight with an arm bar. Mm -hmm. So all I trained with for the last six months was fucking arm bars. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to light someone up with an arm bar and that's what I'm doing. I'm putting a pack on and I'm hiking, you know, as so much as possible. So uh, uh, 50 pounds every day when you do your 22 miles. Uh, correct. 22 it, kilos. It, yeah, 20, 22 kilos. It's like 48 and a half. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually right now training. I've got the pack weighs that much. Yeah. And then I'm putting my hydration in. Okay. So it, it, it starts at 22 kilos. Yeah. And ultimately, I think with a, a full uh, Camelback plus a water bottle is what I carry. A full Camelback mm -hmm. and then a... 24 ounce water bottle mm -hmm. when i'm starting i'm starting at like 55 56 pounds yeah, somewhere right. around there makes sense um yeah because i don't want to go lighter and f put my water in and then yeah like i'd, I'd rather prepare myself to be a little heavier you know? right and then are you so. going to uh take some weight off and just give your body a rest for a little while Cause... nope for me i think we talked about like conceptually kind of like a, a marathon training yeah like where the last week we'll probably lay off and 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 recover a little mm -hmm. bit physically. I just went. I don't know if you saw on social media or anything like that. I just went up to Arrowhead. Um, that was super cool. Those Blackbird Anthems video shoot. So we were hanging out with Rudy yeah. and, and Julia and and doing all that. But I was only hiking a few miles a day because like there was so much going on and just the time to go out. So I would hit a trail like a in, in Arrowhead, a lake yeah. trail or something. So I was getting three to four miles in. Yeah. And 
I felt like I had like days off, you know, <laughs> I felt amazing Yeah. only doing three to four miles. It was incredible. So how long is it taking you to do 22 miles? That is, I think I did it in seven hours, six and a half hours, something like that. Yeah. It's not going to be that. Right. It, it's going to be a lot slower than that. That was a, oh my God, my son has a hockey game. I got to hurry up and sure. get done. So I'm basically almost running like uh, most of the pace. Yeah. Um, and that was a 20 mile day. That wasn't 22, right? So what are we looking at? We're, what, we're planning on eight to 10 hours. Eight a day. to 10. Right. Yeah. Some days, day two in particular is going to be a lot of elevation. He's got to go up and over the Santa Cruz mountains yeah. to get over to highway one. And then he's going to go down the coast. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, it's going to be a pretty gnarly hike. That's probably going to be a long day. Most of the rest of the hikes fairly flat. He's got some other hard days down the road and weather will be interesting and all that other good stuff. Sure. But we're looking at, we're looking at eight to 10 hours closer to eight most of the time yeah. because we need those two hours for recovery and oh recuperation. And you know, I, I did, I don't know if you know about Nijmegen, but it's a, it's a, walk that they do in in holland okay it's 25 miles every day and you know like the army does it and they're like all right motherfuckers listen i know this is a people's walk but we're gonna win this shit and it's yeah. not it's not a competition yeah it's just not it's armies from all over the place and civilians and they just go out and they they hump for four days in a row but to get to the starting point you got to leave the little military camp so there's sometimes five miles extra yeah on each end so you're like holy shit we did so much things yeah and uh, and you're right like, as soon as you finish like i need my feet up and i need to be out yeah and, and all that's, the way out that's Sleep the scary up. of it right because we're planning some stuff that is you know high level people we're meeting with and some places we're going to have a speaking engagement or yeah. i think we plan to meet with blackbird anthem and play a show down in la you know like there's things that are going to happen that I'm not going to get to rest sometimes, you yeah. know, and we'll see how that goes on the road. We've, we've kind of talked about that. We're going to see what happens. I would give you um, two hours yeah. as a norm every it, day. But afterwards. we're thinking sometimes, okay, the half of the hike falls at this church, right? Right. Then we'll go and we'll do a speaking engagement. Yeah. We'll come in and we'll talk or we'll, we'll do something because I don't just want to put on a pack and go and, and not share what we're learning from what we're doing, right? right. Because this is this is something that people spend their whole life talking about and not doing. There's cliffs that we get to jump off of. I did that years ago with my music, right? Mm -hmm. I was scared to death of that. Yeah. I was scared to death of that. I thought that was like something I could never do. I grew up on a farm in Kentucky. I grew up without money. I grew up without ever being told that I could be a top 20 rock artist. Right. That's not real. Yeah. You know, but I grew up loving rock and roll and I thought that I could be that great one day. You yeah. Know? And you have to jump. You're standing on the edge of the cliff. You have to jump. And we've done it with the hike where we've jumped and we're swimming at this point. And I'm going, hell yes, we're going to do amazing things. That's the thing of it, right? It's mm -hmm. not we're out there hiking and, and, and we're, we're doing it to do it. It's we want to turn the intention of an entire community of veterans and first responders, turn their attention to us and say, it's game time. It's time to not just bring awareness. I don't give a fuck about awareness. I'll be honest. I don't right. care about awareness. I want to save people's lives. I want myself, my nieces, my nephew, my sister-in-law, my mother, my other brother, us that wake up every day with someone in our life that, that for some reason beyond my vision decided they didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah. I don't want those people to exist anymore because – I'm not martyring the person that did it. Yeah. I'm martyring the people that have to keep walking. And here's what afterwards. we know about suicide. Like, if you've got your scale of good feelings and bad feelings, you've now got a thumb on your bad feeling side. Yeah. It's just always there. You know, yeah. you have to try to find a way to balance it. And so you do have to. We don't know how to deal with these things. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I've nearly killed myself, yeah. you know, because of PTSD. Yeah. And I'm not in any danger right now, but I feel it every day. Where I'm uh -huh. like, today could be the day. And, and I know how to deal with it. That wasn't easy to get there. Well, I wrote something yesterday. My brother saved my life. My brother's death saved my life. I was drunk. I was really drunk. Like my dad had died and I was blackout drunk. I'm, I'm sober now three and a half years. I was able to get back into my own mind and understand who I am and remember that. But there were times that I remember, and I wrote this yesterday and I put this out on Facebook. I remember thinking the code to my gun safe, mm. thinking the code, the numbers, boop, 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 and how it went and reaching in and racking around. And I remember thinking that over and over and over again, like it's that easy. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. Just 
punch that number and I can punch it all in and it can just light out. Yeah. You know, I was sick when I wrote that. You know, I was sick when I wrote that the other day because it's not who I am anymore. You know, right. and, and, and I've, I've learned so much just by going after things and, and trying, trying to help other people and, and being forward on an objective. If it weren't for the decision my brother made in reality of it, he beat me to the punch. If, if it would have gone the other way, he'd probably be doing the same shit I'm doing right now. And because he was an incredible person, you yeah. know, he was an incredible person and he just got caught up in a monster that he couldn't beat. And it defeated him that day, but it defeated him with a, a 40 caliber round in his brain. Right. You know, and, and you don't come back from that. Mm-mm. You know, uh, you don't come back from that. And, and we see it, unfortunately, in our job. When you show up on those scenes, those are the gnarliest, most evil in the air. You can feel it in a room. There was something bad there that took that person away. Yeah. You know, I, but how do you get through it? And, and, and I think what we're doing is going to help people. We want to show people that you can move forward. You yeah. Know, move forward. Move forward. Find something to do and go after it. Yeah. I think the other thing is we want people to know that people think about it, right? You, you just said, like, it could be today. Yeah. You could have those thoughts. And if you don't redirect that train, yeah. you don't get your mind going in the right place, you can end up on the wrong end of that gun. And I own yeah. those pills or whatever it is. And, and when I talk to my, when I, I get my therapy, I no longer fear talking about that before mm-hmm. I was worried that like it might impact my ability to work. Right. Or yeah, yeah. I might be, especially in our re- job. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, right. you, you know, and you don't know if the VA is going to trick you like, ha ha, now you can't, you know, you're like, right. Yeah. And, it's, it's a yeah, real and thing. there's so much like uh, stigma and rumor and right. like uh, of what is real and what isn't real. Right? But I also know that my, Peers that have done that have had gates in front of them. They've made a choice left, right, left, right, left, right. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know what gate I'm on. I have no idea where I'm at in this maze. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's what I always said, like, how do I arrest? So I stop picking a gate and I just turn around and go the other direction, you know, or yeah. whatever. That's how I reason out in my head. Like you're making decisions, you're on a path and all of a sudden you've got cliff, hill, gun. And I'm yeah. like, I don't want that. You, you know what's crazy? We, right. right. We want to stay... We want to recognize that those are just thoughts that you're right. having. That's all they are. Is, is and that is not you. But they're you are not your th- Oh, I get yeah. it. Yeah. They yeah. are not, but they are not you. Well, are, substance are, helps. Uh, yeah. You know, energize those compulsions too. Yeah. But then you're hearing Adam talk about this, uh, obviously from some sort of life experience and oh. understanding, and knowing it. But Adam's been substance free his entire life. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's not just substance that yeah. that creates it, but substance does help push it forward right sure. like my thought to that is carry a sledgehammer dude it, like <laughs> knock the wall down or the gate or whatever is in front of you yeah, yeah. And, and and go past them and know? that's why I, like, when i say like i consider it i am aware of it every day yeah i'm not in danger today yeah but i i do know that it will be waiting but i've accepted that and yeah. i i build my defense around that but it took a lot of work right to get so to my, that point my feeling is and my experience with suicide has been that silence is the precursor to the event. Hey, this is P.A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. My experience with suicide has been that silence is the precursor to the event. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like people when people the are saying, Hey, I'm having a problem. That's not when they kill themselves. It's when nobody knows when they say everything's okay. Yeah. When they're afraid to talk about it because there are consequences. Like we're not going to pretend like yeah. stuff does happen sure. to people, but when we don't talk about it, when Mike didn't talk about it, yep. Mike ended up dead. Yeah. And so the reason this idea struck me so strongly is we need everybody to know but in particular our veterans that like if you have those thoughts that's okay yeah. like you're not crazy you didn't lose your marbles you're not a bad dude right you just had a thought we've all had that thought yeah yeah you know there's very few people in this world who haven't thought about it yeah and i've had to learn it. this is the things the crazy things i've had to rewire cuz i've got a lot of combat time and most of the time i was out i would talk to these people that have lived these horrible lives and they're all their woe just comes at me and i'm mm-hmm. like oh i'll collect all this woe and it's like i got and this- that's- it's super complicated right yeah. yeah so i was like if 
apart from my own damage, I've got all this other stuff in there. And I, you know, unfortunately, I'm I'm in a spot where I get a lot of that, right? Yeah, right. I, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. And I keep my social media open. Like, mm-hmm. if somebody's got a problem, hit me up, dude. Yeah. You know, that's how I live. But I have a boundary of how far I get involved, right? right? Like, and he and I have actually had conversations where I'm like, hey, dude, I got this guy. This is what what's going on. What do you think I should do in it? Because I don't want to get too deep. Because mm-hmm. once you dive too deep, you kind of, you start eating their yeah their emotions right like if you're an empath at all you feel what they're feeling sure you know and so i work it to a certain level right my first thing is we have that conversation Mm -hmm. hey this isn't cool don't do this you know we kind of try to work out whatever's going on and i'm not a therapist so I'm, i'm not really necessarily very good at that i try and then from there it's what's the next level? What's the next step? I need to put you in that direction and I have to take my hands off. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sorry and I love you and I'll check back in with you in a year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, but that's how I have to handle it when it becomes personal. Yeah. Well, Cause you um, have your own things. To yeah. Like, right. I gotta keep and, me alive. And, and I mean, look at it. I can't accomplish what I'm doing and I can't make it to certain heights and things. Yeah. If I'm constantly focused on, on the someone's individual life, but at the same time, we've been fortunate to touch individual lives. We've helped individual people. We have put people, you know, it, just go on my Facebook feed and, and, yeah. and read some of my posts and go through like the comments of videos that we have. There are people that are saying, John saved my life. John's song saved my life. Mm-hmm. Dude, we're just scratching the surface. Yeah. You know, and, and what we're going to do with what we're doing moving forward, not just the hike, the the after of this hike the the film that's going to come out yeah the impact that we're going to make it is more than i could have ever imagined i could have ever gone in my entire life three times over and, and we're there and, and it's going to happen you yeah know? it's and it's great because part of the thing is, is like you said awareness is great but but how do you teach someone to not do it like how do you build good friends around you who know you better than you know you and they have the capability of, of turning you around or giving you a sledge, you know, and they know like less drinking, more talking, let's go walk or whatever it is. Right. They take you out of that gate. You know, like quit walking through these gates. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Yeah. And so that's kind of my background role in this is John's the face of everything that's going on. And my, mm-hmm. my, and I've told this to John multiple times, my goal in this every time is to make sure that when we pass bill, who mm-hmm. lives somewhere in California mm-hmm. that Bill can have a conversation maybe for the first time yeah. with his brother, sister, mother, wife say, Hey, you know, this suicide thing. And they're like, yeah, you're, you're a veteran. How do you feel about that? And then he can say, you know, I struggle with this. Yeah. And then we can open that conversation up. So it's not about awareness because everybody knows suicide's a problem. Yeah. It's about getting that guy to talk to his wife yeah. or his brother yeah. about what's really going on. It's really hard with your significant other because you don't want to burden her, in my case, or in your case, yeah. her. You don't want to, like, like hey, we've got enough other stuff to deal with. Yeah. So I don't take that to my girlfriend, but I do take it to somewhere, right? But I've had to learn all these things. When we had Rudy on the show, and Rudy was talking about having a gun in his mouth, and I'm like, God, I just no fear of talking about this. Yeah. I've got to get over myself. i got to get to there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Rudy's a special character too, right? And, and I think he knows that he's a special character. Yeah, he's got an opportunity to reach a mass yeah. and get a lot of respect in doing it. So he's helping and touching and saving lives and everything that he's yeah. doing. And that's why it's super cool that like he's like, yeah, dude, how many days do you want me to hike? When can I be there? What can I do? Yeah, it's like we know we're doing something really special. Sure. You know, like we're doing something really special. I think to the the narrative that that Adam's saying. I, I've had individuals in the past where it opened up, right? Like they've called me. I'm going to take my life. I don't know this guy. You know, I'm going to take my life. I'm done. And I'm like, dude, call me. You know, yeah, yeah, we're on the phone. By the end of the call, mm-hmm. you're looking at, I've got mom calling me the next day. I've got dad calling me the next day saying, we had no idea. But whatever you did brought him to us. Yeah. we are going to take care of this, you know, and that's, that's the best scenario, that's, right? That's what we're because at. the best thing about that is mm. a lot of times the family doesn't know, right? Yeah. You know, if family never knows, yeah. they never understand, they don't know what's going on. So when we actually enlighten the family with what's happening, 
where you you were my family where when my brother killed himself we all said what yeah that was my first response like you're wrong mike who no yeah. mike who yeah was what i said yeah. mike who wow who the fuck are you talking about i don't i only know one mike and there's that the family never knows right yeah when mike shot himself we were blown away yeah. And not just me. There was, uh, by the way, uh, my brother was a fucking hero. Like yeah. he was a hero. Uh, we had a funeral that lasted nine hours. Jesus. Because people lined up outside of the largest church in Boone County, Kentucky, and that's a big church. That's Boone mm -hmm. County, Kentucky. God darn it. They got a lot of Jesus out there. Right? A lot of Jesus. And people lined up in zero degree weather outside. Wow. They're already lined up outside of the building to wrap around to go in to visit my brother one more time. Mm -hmm. I would say that 80% of the people out there met him, knew him, and had touched them personally. Right? He was an incredible person. He, I heard so many stories about who he was and what he had done for other people. Right. I didn't even know. Right? Yeah. So that happens. The entire northern Kentucky shuts down right. to to fucking escort him from one side of town to the other yeah. to go be cremated, right? We left the church to go to the funeral home, and every street for 15 miles was lights and sirens, you yeah. know? So you have this incredible person that we all knew was amazing, and now he's gone. Yeah. And that's a lot of times the veteran of the family is the strong one, right? It's supposed to be, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that that puts extra pressure on them. So to have them be able to tell mom and dad, "Hey, I got something going on." And maybe my brother felt like he couldn't do that anymore cuz my dad was gone or whatever. But to have them to be able to do that, we're shaking things up we're giving a new avenue that that isn't going to be there otherwise you know yeah i mean uh, i want to ask all of the obvious questions about your brother but you know the answer is that reality is is it's too late for all those questions no like, yeah, yeah there's no question to ask he's gone you know? <laughs> yeah yeah and, and trust me it took me years to yeah, yeah process yeah, yeah. that and and you have to go and now the whole entire family is going through death and dying grieving for your dad oh and by the way all this damage comes along and now you got to do it with your brother and, you know, that whole cycle, it works out its own pace. Yeah. And then something else can come in and reset you, and you can stay in that cycle for a long time. I worry about my other brother sometimes. He's older than me as well. He was the middle. Yeah. I worry about him sometimes just because he says, I never got to grieve dad. Right. You know, and that's how he feels about the whole situation. And, and people need to understand, like, he's pissed off at Mike. You know? Yeah. I'm not glorifying Mike. I'm not giving Mike a high five. I don't talk to him. I talk to my dad. You yeah. Know? But I don't talk to Mike right now. I don't. I don't right. know if we'll when we're going to get there. Sure. Yeah. You know, maybe at the end of this hike, I can actually say something. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You know, but like, right now, I talk to Dad, and Dad can communicate to Mike if he needs to. You know. Yeah. But there is a lot of broken going on. I've talked about this in other interviews. I don't care to share the, or I don't care not to share this because it needs to be known. I have twin nieces that don't talk to each other. Right. Twins. Yeah. I have family members that are all smashing each other's heads together. Yeah. Because of one night, a pile of thoughts and the inability to stop those thoughts from taking full manifestation. Yeah. And now four years will be the day we step on this hike. Four years. Wow. And, and I promise you, I will be as ripped on that day emotionally as I was the day it happened. Yeah, yeah, I promise you will. You're going to uh, yeah. get hit a lot. Yeah. You're hitting me with your hitting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's heavy. Let's talk a little bit about the support that's around you because there's a lot of people that are jumping on board. There's a lot of big, big players that are already committed. Unbelievable, man. We talked about all the all of our celebrity friends. I, even, it, you know, one of the first people I saw uh, that I went and I sat down with and said, help me. Because <laughs> this was before we signed yeah. with, with Silver Rose Entertainment, Veteran Powered Films, yeah. before I met Julia, before I met Micah. I actually called River Rainbow. I don't know if you know River. River did the volunteers. He went over and was a medic fighting ISIS, and he shot that that series that ended up on wow. uh, Audience Network. And he went with uh, Ricky Schroeder to shoot the fighting season multiple times, right? Wow. So River knows how to shoot these kind of films. Yeah. His PTS right now is through the roof, so he's not able to work on the film, so I couldn't get him until post. He's going to work with us at the end. Yeah. But... I went and I sat down with River and said, what do I do? You know? Yeah. And 
again, here's someone that's this incredible person that has all this stuff. And he's like, I'm going to tell you everything I know, you know, and then after he broke it down like that and gave me a little bit of confidence. Right. So now River's going to come out and hike, you yeah. know, and he's going to tell his story, which is a crazy story, you know? Yeah. So we've had all these different things that, that just keep happening. You want to talk about the, the miracle of this was part of the magic. And, yeah, and I don't know. I think this story like, really belongs to you, but maybe I can set it up a little bit. It's part of the magic. And, and Adam, call it, what do you call it? We can call it the miracle of Mattis. Is that what we're going to call it? Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. And we haven't announced this, so it's your <laughs> <gonna, laughs> right? uh, Yeah, Here we go. Breaking news. We're, We're not going to say any dates because we want to keep that low. Sure, right. Yeah, yeah got to have a low profile on that. Yeah. So two months ago, we were working. He was actually at a different station. He and I normally work the same station, but he was mm-hmm. at Station 3 and I was at Station 6. And we got word at like 5 in the afternoon that General Mattis was going to be visiting campus and had specifically requested to visit with fire and police personnel, particularly those that had served in the military. And sure enough, the next morning, John showed up. We got there. John had written a, a letter that he sent to me, and we, we kind of went over real quick, which was truly inspired. Yeah. Um, and I'll let John finish the story. So we met him. Yeah. Like we we hang out with Mattis. Uh, he came in. It was pretty cool. First of all, like, let's let's just say this guy, he has presidential presence, right? Yeah. Like I I wish he'd run. Oh, I wish he would too. He's too smart um, too though. Too smart too, right? Yeah. yeah. I, people hate him in a in a, another year after he did run. Yeah. Impeach him. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Come on. Yeah. It, but politics aside, yeah. This is just an incredible person, right? You know. And I served under him in Iraq. He when I went, he was commanding whole first Mardiv, right? Uh-huh. So his letter that he had written for us to go into combat, when I wrote my letter, I actually referenced that letter because there was Perfect. a line in that that that, that kind of touched me. And it was, you know, the the about carrying the weight on your young shoulders uh, for the rest of, you know, world. You yeah. know, everything that we're doing right now is all on us, you know? So I wrote in this letter and, and I did not mention the hike. I told him, sir, pleasure to meet you. I served under you. You know, it's an honor. We laughed. We joked a little bit. You know, it like probably had a little different rapport than everyone else in there. Mm-hmm. Like I was cracking jokes and then Barry was constantly barraging yeah, him there, with, with the... political questions. So I, like I would make fun of Barry, you know, so there was a there was a report. Was and this is a, a room of full guys, of people mm-hmm. right? yeah. and just a bunch of guys listening to a wizard do magic right yeah and it was super just cool to hear some of the things he was saying his perspective on stuff like america's biggest threat right he was asked that Mm -hmm. what do you think our biggest threat is right now and this is what i took from it mostly Mm -hmm. he said we don't treat each other good anymore yeah we as a people no longer treat each other kind yeah to, from the greatest killer in history, right? This guy mm-hmm. has like orchestrated some of the best assaults in U.S. history, and his whole thing is Americans are not treating Americans right. It's it true. wasn't we need to worry about Iran or ISIS or and no, of course those are real problems. Sure, but we got to treat each other better. It's one hundred percent true. And actually, this is where I say this. So, it's on Facebook of the anniversary of it, it was like four years ago. We had Sebastian Younger on, and uh-huh. he's like. Here's your task. You guys don't need to go and do anything else anywhere else. You need to get us, rally us in the middle. Yeah. Because we're all assholes to each other. Yeah. You know, we're not decent to one another. We can't tolerate one another. It makes yeah. us a bunch of bigots. Yeah. So he's right. And it's absolutely because people are talking about a civil war. We're not trying to make this a political thing, but you all don't understand what that means. Yeah. You no, said the no, first no, Mardiv no guy, yeah. like you just, which side am I on? Where's the enemy? Yeah. We don't want that. Yeah, no, 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 we've all seen too much of that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So they asked Matt, Mattis that and he's there. Yeah. So I walked up to the security guard, which I know mm-hmm. knew our guy. That's how it all happened in the first place. I said, "Hey, this is a private man. You know, I served under him. You think you can kick this to him later?" Right? Yeah. I'm laying in bed napping. Mm-hmm. And the next morning. The next day. Mm-hmm. And I get a phone call. It's not even morning. It was like it was like two o'clock in the afternoon or something. It was like an afternoon nap for sure. Right. And, and he likes his afternoon naps. I I answer the phone, and it's like, hey, John, Jim Mattis here. Lock your body. And I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, you know. And and my girlfriend and my son are both standing there doing a dance, and like <laughs> we're just like, oh my god. And he 
had already went to the, his secretary, had already plotted out a date, had already told us what he was doing and said, I'm in. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa. What? Yeah. This is a secretary of defense, dude. Yeah. This is like in our community, like a legend. Legend. You know, yeah. like probably the largest living legend in military time, right? You know, maybe yeah. Marcus or somebody like that. Maybe. But when I mean, it, you're when talking about Marcus, Colin Powell, someone yes. who you could say their name and you're like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah you say Colin or, yeah. or Mad Dog or, yeah. you know, or Powell or Mad Dog or Marcus, right? Yeah, you know, right those right, names yeah. all ring. We're running out of names community. now. Yeah. Yes. What's this? Like? Chris Kyle, right? Like right. somebody that everybody knows. And holy shit. He's calling my phone. Yeah. Like, I am I can text him now. What's up, Jim, Matt? What's up, Jim? You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Not that I would ever do that. But uh, conceptually, that's that's a real probability now. Right. You know, and, and four months ago, or two months ago at that time, I had an idea. Yeah. You know? So magic is happening, and, and it, it's happening at full force. And a lot of really cool people want to be part of that. Sure. And the people that I knew prior are all on board, but then there's people like Scott. I didn't yeah. know Scott, you know, right. I, but now Scott's on board and, yeah. and he's super stoked about it. And yeah, you know, like we keep, that's the energy that's here. Well, let's talk a little know? bit about like what that part of the Scott thing, because, you know, we're, we support save the brave. Like there are official charity charter. Right? Yeah. yeah. And they're going to be partnering with you guys in the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the partnering thing is super cool. Like, yeah. hey, I, did you come up with this idea? Did I come up with this idea? Did Julia come up with this idea? Someone, I'm not sure. Someone came up with the idea. <laughs> someone um, did come up with the idea. We're going to raise money when we're going, right? And yeah. I, think, I think the initial idea came because people kept saying, where do we go to donate? Yeah. Right. And now, right now, you're donating to the cause. You're donating to us getting everything orchestrated. So, right. 22nu.net, boom. Yes, um, go. Donate. 22nu.net, yeah. 22 and Y-O-U. And that net. will be in the show notes, yes. too, as okay. well, so you guys can find um, it. And while we're rolling, we're going to keep that active, mm-hmm. right? And we have 26 days. So, day one, I am not giving anything. Day one, we are just getting through day one. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a big show, you know? Yeah. So we just need to get through day one. And moving forward in five day blocks, we're giving five nonprofits the opportunity to use our hike as a fundraiser. Nice. Every press that I do during that time period, we are talking about their nonprofit and what they do to help. Obviously, what we're doing and all of that too, mm-hmm. but we are going to help promote them and we're going to send them to their websites or our website to donate directly to them. And we're doing that. We We've got. Right now, four out of five already in. So Save the Brave was the third. I have Adaptivet, which has been helped me through my career immensely, yeah. and Project Unbreakable, who those two actually just came up. I, I flew to Toronto and shot a music video, and, and they were like 100% on board with making that work and happen for me. So right. everybody that's been supportive like that, obviously – we're bringing into this and saying we're going to do everything we can to give back yeah. to you. And we love like the fact that it's all different types, right? This isn't just suicide, adaptive vet, building a, you know, adaptable homes for people sure. and, and creating ramps and things like that is preventing suicide, right? When you have a 75 or 65 year old Vietnam vet and he can't get in and out of his house anymore. And that's what it becomes. You're breaking his will. You're breaking his mind. This is a warrior that now has a broken will. We might head down that route. They come in. They 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 spend a little bit of time of their money. Sure. And, and they fix that for him. And, and they keep him strong and living, right? Yeah. So there's different avenues and aspects. And we're, we're utilizing all that. Project Unbreakable doesn't just work on transitioning and, and therapy. They're doing it for first responders as well. So we have all these different people, you know, that that we're yeah. bringing on and on board, it, and like, it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> so I told him, I think we can raise a million dollars. I think we can. Yeah. I, with the time and the press and everything that's going to happen while we're hiking, and the people behind it, we could do that easy. You know, we could do that easy. Yeah, I wouldn't even put a limit. I'd just like go out and get it all. Yeah. You know, yeah. all of it. Yeah. yeah. So so everybody can can contribute by going to give the website again. Uh, Twenty two and you dot net. Twenty two. And if you can't figure that out, just hit me up at P Dave Turner on any social media or get, get you on it. Yeah. John Preston Music. Right. Uh, yeah. Super easy. Uh, 
you'll see everything I'm posting about it right now. I'm starting to get it to where it, we're getting ready to run press too. I, right. I had some TV the other day on accident. <laughs> I, basically, John put out straight out of combat. Yeah. And the next day I had a message from NBC in the Bay Area saying, hey, you good to shoot this week? And I yeah. was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yes. There's a guy so, that I've come across. He's a, he's a vet, um, Navy EOD. He just put his show up the other day. Walked into a room in Syria, bomb went off. He wasn't working on it. It was just a, a, a bomb to blow people up, right? So uh-huh. He didn't even know it was there. Made him a quadriplegic, took an eye, and took his voice. And so he's struggling. You know, quadriplegics are always fighting for their life. He, yeah, yeah, he, for sure. And this, he, not even been two years since he got blown up. So he only got out of the hospital this spring and has been back three times with pneumonia. This guy is fighting all he can, right? Uh huh. Ask me how much weekly care he gets for his mental well being. Ask me that because the number is going to be really close to fucking zero. Oh my goodness. Can you believe that? Yeah. It so shocks physical me. care is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For obviously, sure. yeah. Right. Keep him alive. Someone from the command stops by every now and then. My mouth is like, oh, how do we fix that? Right. right. And here, here was I. Uh, so I talked to General John Michelle the other day. That's a bad dude right there. General Leadership, the blog. Like uh-huh. I wrote for him for a okay. while. So having him involved in this. Yeah. First of all, it, how many times have we said the word general? It, yeah. My father would just be tickled to death Good. That, that we know and talk to all these generals now. Yeah. You know? yeah. like, that is the coolest thing ever. So General John Michelle, how do we make sure that goes to the right place? Seriously. You know, yeah. it, so it doesn't need to be Congressman so-and-so and, you know, General so-and-so. Like, not yeah. everybody's John Michelle, right? Right. It, most of them are like, suck it up, weak dick. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. That's most of our upper leadership of the military. Right. Which is a mentality that kills people. It, right? Yeah. Like, exactly. Is... And that's why we're dropping off left and right, right? Hey, so how do we figure out where that money goes? Yeah. And doing something like we're doing where we're creating characters, right? We're creating people that now in a pop culture world that we live in, if I'm a top 20 artist and I'm now a Golden Globe winner for some amazing documentary that, that we're shooting, yeah. and now I have the ability to tweet and reach a million people, and they're like, what did John say today? Mm-hmm. We will control where that money goes. Yeah. You know, we will control where that money goes. Yeah. It, you look at just fame versus contact, right? Kanye West can send a tweet, and he can go meet with President Trump. Yeah. I need to be Kanye West then, yeah. you know, because we need to make sure this money goes in the right hands and we don't deal with that problem anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That we don't deal with why is this guy not getting mental health support? All this attention because currently the whole Donald Trump pulling people out of Kurdistan. Everybody's wanting to send folks to to Kurdistan to get blown. But that's where he got blown up. Yeah. You know, so if you guys are cool with sending us there, you better be cool with how this guy's being treated. And people can't even bother to listen to a fucking half hour show about this guy's life. Yeah. And he can't even talk. His wife's got to talk for him. Yeah. By the way, four kids. The first kid has cerebral palsy. Ugh. Needs constant care. Yeah. Have they got enough on their plate? You're telling oh, and So, so yeah. like, these are the things where like, it may be the best thing for him is to turn the lights off because he's just, there's so much damage there, but let's let him fight first. Let's get him help. So yeah. that if that and is make the case, that decision with a clear head, yeah, and with a the good professional, place. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you know, because because that it is hard to do what he's doing, but what he needs, and this is, and I'll, I'll tell you why I say this, he needs a purpose. Yeah, you know, and he can't have yeah. a purpose because he's always in survival mode. You know, because he had to go to Syria and get blown up for. Well, and I'm telling everyone that's not him, right? Because most of us didn't get blown up. Yeah. You look at the numbers. There's more of us blowing ourselves up now than there was that got blown up. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that happens every year, right? Yeah, we lost ten thousand somewhere around there, a little over that in fifteen years of war, and we've lost sixty thousand in the since two thousand eight from suicide. Ridiculous. Yeah. So what we need to tell that person is they also need a mission. Yeah. You know, and, and find your life's purpose and, and go get it. Even even if it's micro missions, yeah. right? A little bit at a time. When you're accomplishing, you're accomplishing and it feels good. Yeah. Keep stimulating yourself with that feel good. You know, yeah. there there's a way out of it and, and it's making shit feel good. I used to do a lot of odd jobs here in Palo Alto. And when I was walking through from the firehouse out to Stanford, that bad specter hit me hard. Yeah. Because I was in survival mode and I was obsolete. Yeah. I couldn't find a job. I couldn't even get a fucking interview. Yeah. I got a goddamn master's degree and I could 
I could take a brigade and change its focus based upon my ability to go out and do my job. Yeah. And I come back and I can't get someone to say hello to me about a job. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. And just walking through that thing, that's, I, I want to say that for the audience so they can understand, like, just me visiting Palo Alto put it on me, put that, put that backpack on. I'm just like, oh, fuck, man. I really, you know, I took care of it. But what if you don't have those tools? What if you don't have the access to it? What if, what if you just can't take any more from that point? It's something simple like that. Yeah. Well, and that's what recognizing your triggers, right? Yeah. And sobriety helped me with that. You know? Yeah. Recognizing your triggers and then walking into your trigger and, and telling that trigger now, like, I'm cool. You're, you're not going to put me down. Yeah. You know, it, it's not avoiding them. I avoided them for a long time. And then yeah. I'd get drunk and fall into one and it, shit would explode, right? Right. It, uh, but walk into it and say, you don't scare me anymore, dude. Right. Like, and, and and I know that sounds super like, oh, I've got life figured out. Yeah, yeah. I don't. <laughs> you know, I don't. And every no, day I have my own I'll struggles. Yeah, Adam <laughs> can tell you. Uh, but when all said and done, I'm not just here. Yeah. You know, I'm not just here because, uh, like I said, my brother saved my life. I'm here probably because of what he did. Yeah. Because it, whether it was suicide or or dying in a drunken car crash or something stupid yeah getting shot because i got in a fist fight in the street in san francisco whatever right you know like again whatever i did either way look at what we're doing now yeah and if i wouldn't have made it past that period in my life Mm. my legacy would have been nothing right you know and now i i have the pride to tell my son one day this is everything your father did, and this is everything we did, and I did this for you. Yeah. I did this to show you that you can move the entire earth, too. You know, and, and, and that's what we're shooting to do. <laughs>